welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is the woman who knows how to set personal boundaries, Alex Standy. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And we're especially glad to be joined by David Strickle, the stream of David, back to join us once again. And he's brought a, a Taya friend with him, recent Taya bootcamp graduate, David Rude, also joining us today. And David Strickle, we're going to have to have David S. and David R., otherwise I'm going to get totally confused here. So David S. was telling me that David R. is just as good at asking the stream questions as I am, or maybe even better. So this is going to be a fun show. This oh is going to be a really, really fun show because, I mean, between the two of us. And, and then, we, of course, we got the Alex Standy. And you never know. She, she's usually quiet, right? We know this. She's usually quiet. But every once in a while, she just jumps. So I'm not. And then, and then there's, oh, my God, where did that come from? So this is going to be an interesting show. This is going to be very good. So uh, and if anyone coming in on the live stream, you want to be asking questions when we get the stream involved, we'll be glad to do that. But uh, first things first, uh, David Strickle, you're looking good today with your your, your Santa Claus work look is really um, playing well on you. I have to tell you that. <laughs> I, I mean, was going to say that. Thing, right? I you bring know? gifts. <laughs> yes. You bring gifts. That's right. <laughs> no, it plays very well on you. You're looking good. I'm and, trying to uh, get my husband to do the Santa look. He, are you he, really? He's not like, yeah. I was like, I, I don't know. Ever since, uh, I don't. Maybe it's because I got older. I don't know. But like, the white hair is doing it for me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. I, I can. I mean, give Kenny a few years, but I'm not sure I can really visualize him that way just yet. Oh, it's coming. It's is already it really? right here and right here. It's already happening. It's in the beard. It's in the beard. But the, oh, the, okay. the blonde hairs are holding on. And I'm like, nah, just go white. Just go white. Just do it. <laughs> I love it. That's great. So let's get to know David Rood and David R. I guess we're going to call you today. But uh, yeah. David, first of all, welcome to the program. And how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So. And, and we got since, since you're one of the most recent graduates of the Taya Boot Camp, we, we've done a lot of Taya here on the program over the years. And uh, so our, our audience is quite familiar with it. But tell us just in a minute or two, what's your big takeaway from having gone through that program? Well, yeah. So, I mean, I started following the podcast summer of 2019. So I had a mm -hmm. good long time of sort of getting uh, exposed to the whole Taya practice and all of that um, before actually doing boot camp. Uh, and it really spoke to me because I, I have sort of an into law of attraction stuff before, uh, like going years back, but I always kind of struggled with this idea that like, sort of like most of the teachers would sort of approach like, well, if you just stay happy all the time, then only good stuff happens to you. And that just never worked for me because I just couldn't stay happy all the time. Right? Something would sure. bug me at some point, you know, and the stream was the first time I heard this idea of polarity that it's actually, you know, right. in your completed state, you kind of have eternal bliss. So why would you come to physical then if not for the roller coaster and all the mess, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that was when I first kind of clicked and I was like, okay, I guess this sort of makes sense. So I, I followed that for about, um, about two years and then, got into actually did boot camp in uh just this last spring finished up a few weeks ago and yeah I'm, I'm i'm loving it it was a great experience and i'm um yeah so okay so not that's so much a big takeaway other than you loved it yeah it was great but, i mean that's it was a good like, one. Uh, I'm, I'm not criticizing i think it's a great takeaway i'm just saying oh, that's what it is yeah yeah i mean it was it was it was it was hard uh and it it oh man it's like put a few words in the bootcamp experience is, is really, it's almost <laughs> impossible because you sort of, it's sort of like this kind of maze you go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through, you're like, what am I doing here again? And you find all this stuff that you didn't know that existed and you find right. aspects of yourself that some of them you really, really like others that really terrify you. And then at some point you're like, okay, I have to like sort through all this. And then when you come out, you kind of look back to where you were before and you sort of don't quite recognize yourself, but at the same time, you're in a better place. But I don't know, it's 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 kind of a very hard to put into words exactly what that process is like. Well, I agree. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And, and I would say the coming out part, that's actually probably almost the best part, not because you're graduated, but because you've done so much work in such an intense, short period of time, in my case, about twice the normal time, but you've done it in a relatively short period of time, you're flying. And, and you feel invincible when you come out, right? Right. Yeah. Actually, yeah, really yeah, do. you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and and well and of course that's one of the things you have to watch out for i'm sure david's told you about that and others have told you that you have to keep doing the work otherwise all of a sudden one day you say well, wait a minute what happened where did it all go <laughs> <laughs> that's well, what we call it a practice now, you it's like practice. Out, yeah. that's right <laughs> yeah yeah like figure out like my my practice going forwards which i'm i'm you know i'm putting together and I'm, it's like uh so it's still a, it's gonna be a while I, I realize now that boot camp is just like the beginning of this whole thing it's just yeah. uh you know it's it's just the first toe in the water really so absolutely well yeah anytime that you're doing work on yourself on, uh, on an intensive basis it is the beginning of a journey it's also part of a journey and mm -hmm. it's it, it, the, the best way that i know of to look at any kind of personal work is that it is part of a, of a longer journey i mean yes boot camp gets, to, gets defined in terms of those you know what I, what is it 17 modules i can't remember exactly but there, yeah. there's a there's a fixed number of things that you do and then you're done but of course, that's not really true. You're never really done. It's, it's continuous. It's lifelong. Yeah. So, yeah. well, this is good. This is this is a good setup. And uh, uh, David, we, we we haven't chatted in a while. I'm, I'm guessing that you're ready to be doing some streaming today. But is there anything yeah. particular going on in the tire world that you want to tell us about before we get into that area? Uh, the the summer has been. We're sort of wound down in our community for the summer. We haven't had any uh, podcasts come out in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So uh, we're looking forward to kind of getting back at it in a, another couple of weeks with several new podcasts that we have in the can and nice. our Patreon community is doing very well. Uh, it's, it's an interesting time. It's a very interesting time of transition from years of really sort of pushing to fully integrating into the practice as a message. I don't even call it a business anymore. It's a message mm -hmm. and allowing the message to be everything. So the streams message and the tie up practice, which is the practical application of the streams message. It's that's just what, that's what there is. So it's not about, uh, you know, anything specific, any specific aspect of it anymore. I am just here to share it with the world because I've spent the last four years teaching it to people all over the world. And now I know what works, how it works for people from all walks of life. And I see what's going on across humanity, which is not that unusual. It does seem like mm -hmm. polarity is, is, is sort of uh, amping up in our world. Yeah. More division, more strife, a lot more things to be anxious about, not just in the United States, but everywhere. Yes. And I see this as a path out of all that. And so there's a lot of that woven into the teachings these days of this mindset practice is your security. This mindset practice is going to elevate you beyond anything that's going on in what we call the matrix. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why I I'm just thrilled to share it anywhere and everywhere that I can, because that's what I want to share with humanity for whomever is ready for it. So it's, it's a whole different vibe. It's a lot more chill uh, than it used to be. <laughs> okay. But you know, that, that building period where my type a was kind of stepping forward, that was important. You know, sure. that, that, what really built all of the tools and the coaching and all of the things that we have now that's created. And now it's sort of like, Hey, you know, I can relax and just share the message and just let that be. And whatever transpires from the sharing of the message is, is how things unfold. It, it, it's sort of like you do the practice long enough. You get so confident in your own abundance that you really let go of the reins and allow the universe to deliver abundance, whatever that looks like. And it's, it's more magical for me and the other people that have been at this for a few years, it's a more magical way to experience life than thinking, okay, I've got to manifest this thing and I've got to manifest this, this, you know, this experience. I've got to manifest this new house. I've got to manifest this relationship. I've got to manifest this, you know, health, uh, you know, state of health that I want to be in. It really is letting go of all that and realizing that all of that intentional manifestation is something that anybody can do if you want to. But it's, if you keep doing the work, you really do get to a point where, okay, let the universe dictate what's next and trusting that and returning to the trust of all of that, because I have manifested all the stuff that you're supposed to want to manifest in the matrix. Right. And, and it's fine that I had those experiences, but now just the peace of mind of knowing that well being is always going to be provided no matter what. And that a magical journey awaits if I get out of the way of the universe and just allow it to happen. Period. Period! Exclamation point! Absolutely, <laughs> I love this. So, and, and Alex, you, you've you've uh, been on uh, some of these stream sessions before, right? You've you've been 
uh, yeah. part of the time where, where where David did the the streaming. I've so seen the magic. Yes. So, so you know, but but if I remember correctly, you, you were kind of quiet on the questions. So I'm kind of curious to see if you'll be willing to jump in with a question or two this time. Well, he kind of takes over and explains everything. So it's like. I'm here to learn too. <laughs> well, they they do you. have a way of answering questions that aren't verbalized sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's, I'm ready if you all are. We'll, we'll, we'll bring Yeah, let's in. go for it. Sounds good. Do it to it. <laughs> Excuse me. We are here. Welcome, Stream. We're very glad to have you back here on our podcast. And uh, we have uh, three of us here joining you and uh, getting ready to ask you a bunch of questions. We're, we're, we're kind of stoked because it's always fun whenever we have you here to basically give us a lot of great education. I mean, you're, you're giving us teachings that we can apply in our lives and so forth. But one of the, my favorite parts is just the stuff that I learn. I just I, I gain you know concepts and ideas and and filling gaps that had never been filled in before. So in advance, I'm telling you, thank you for that. And so to get us started, I'm going to uh, bring in our newest guest today because I know he's got at least one or two questions lined up. So David R, why don't you give it a shot? Cool, thank you. Um, I have a question about this sort of gravitational element of vibrations because i notice like i have days where it's just like really hard to get motivated but then when i actually sort of in 20 minutes into the task i'm like sucked in and i even have to set a, a timer so i remember that i have to stop and like come to like a meeting or something and i sometimes feel like vibrations are like a gyroscope that sort of like holds in place C could you speak a bit about that why that is and how we can more smoothly transition from one vibrational uh state to another the, the, the tuning to a different vibration is, is something that you're all doing all the time. You, you are never tuned to, to one vibrational frequency and holding yourself static in, in that vibration. That is why polarity exists. Pol polarity exists to, to ensure that you are sort of knocked out of the signal, if you will, and experience different vibrations because that static state of being is your eternal or eternal state of being so you come into physical to have the opposite experience you come into physical to have a vibrational journey that is always going to be fluctuating but what you have described is is, is the intentional tuning and the, the the practice of intentionality can be something that will soften for you with practice because when you start being more intentional and, and sort of, for lack of better terminology, forcing yourself into a different vibration to go have the experience that you know that you should be having, or you know per perhaps that it serves your greater desire in the moment, but you're not vibing with it in the moment, you, tuning to that intentionally feels very disruptive early on in your practice. But you will reach a point where you have amped up trust in your ability to shift vibrationally to the point where your belief system is no longer being overridden when you want to shift these vibrations so that you can just move more smoothly from one vibration into the next. The, you, 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 the crux of your question is you, you are in this vibrational frequency. You wish to be in this vibrational frequency. You can force yourself into it. And then once you get into it, 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 it is it is like what took me so long why did i wait to get in here now that i'm in here i'm doing it so with such great ease that works on every single topic for all of you but again you're operating in a matrix that, that leads you to believe that it's very difficult to do that so you have all of this this residual resistance about doing things like that because your your matrix is designed to keep you humming along sort of in a sea of sameness so that you're in your lane, you're doing your thing, you're contributing what you're contributing to humanity, whatever that is, and you, you are very predictable and you're somewhat controllable in that space. So once you learn the true secret that you indeed can shift to a different vibrational reality, even if it's task oriented, but it all works the same. So the same way that you might shift into a different vibration to go and, and complete a task, you can shift into a different vibration to change any aspect of your life. 
it all works the same because you're in the isness of that new vibration. So the more you practice shifting vibrations and jumping around, it is sort of like jumping timelines, if you will. The, the more you practice it and the more you release the resistance around your ability to do that, the smoother it will be for you. Thank you. So if would it be easier if we took time before we begin the task to try to like vibration align with it internally before we actually do the physical change? Is that advisable, do you think? It, it depends on how much resistance you still hold, because if you hold a lot of resistance, you, you will do and by do we mean manifest magnificent things to hold you away from the thing that you're that you're not aligned with. So if sometimes going and placing yourself in that new vibrational reality, sort of the forcing of the hand of it works, works very well, might work more effectively than sitting and trying to psych yourself into something necessarily where there's still a lot of resistance. So it really just depends on your belief system, the evolution of your belief system. This is why we have delivered Taya to humanity because Taya gives you the tools to, to gain control of your belief system. And, and, and continually rewrite a new belief system that's more in alignment with the things that you're desiring to experience. Thank you. I, I love that last phrase there, to take control of your belief system. We don't normally think of a belief system as something that we control, but we do. But we don't think of it that way. That's a, that's a really important It, it was your creation to begin with. Anything that you create, yeah. you possess the ability to change. But that's not the way people tend to experience it, is what I'm saying. We, we live in this world of contrast, and in this world of polarity and contrast, very often we fall into what we generically call a victim mindset. And in that victim mindset, the last thing we think is that we create all this stuff. This is all happening to me. That is, that is your matrix, and that, that is a human-created matrix. It, it is an ego-driven, collective consciousness-created matrix that, that promotes the concept of, of victimization and, and things of that nature that, that hold you into this space that, that essentially robs you of your creative abilities. And it's powerful. And, and, it and, and you see it regenerating itself and being fed continually in your world. And, and, the, and the reason that we point toward it so often is so that you can come around to understanding, those of you that are interested in these teachings can come around to understanding that... That is a human created matrix. It's a vibration. It is not evil. It is not there to cause your destruction or anything of that nature, but, but it is an operating system that you assign yourselves to that you can choose to operate in or not. And the, the, the way to successfully move yourselves out of that matrix is to create a different matrix for yourselves to move into. You, you, you need an operating system. We, we do not use the term need very often, but as a physical being, you, you run on an operating system that is your belief system. So when you step out of a belief system and, and you're detuning it, we, we use religion very often. It, it is very common across humanity, especially at this time, for, for beings to question the religion that they were raised in because a lot of things have shifted around those vibrations. So they question that religion, they move out of that belief system, but they find themselves defaulting into yet another belief system. And very often that, that will take the form of politics or conspiracy theories or consumerism or some combination of those things that simply replace the religion as the new God. It's very true, yeah. And it just continues to contribute to the polarity among other things. <laughs> What are the Indeed, things you're I You're always going to experience polarity. Polarity is part of your world, but how you experience polarity is completely up to you. Yes. Because the right. judgment of the polarity, the judgment of the contrast is what's creating the suffering in it, not mm -hmm. the polarity or the contrast itself. And interesting that you mentioned that because in the, roughly, was it six, seven, eight months or so since I left boot camp, um, like probably like most people who have left boot camp, uh, I, I still have pretty strong memories of, of what it was like learning the stuff about myself that I was learning and, and what I brought out of it. And then like most people, I came out of boot camp and um, I found myself feeling good for a time. And then I realized I had to do the work on a continuing basis. And so I'm doing the work on a continuing basis. And most of the time I end up feeling good. And yet I still find myself like anybody else getting tripped up by the polarity and I, I fall down in the spiral and I have to deal with it and then pull myself back up again. Um, sometimes using the tools, sometimes I forget to use the tools, but like anything else, it's, it's more like a process that we do over time. We, we, 
we learn to adopt this new habitual pattern into our lives more and more often. It's not about how perfectly we do it. It's, you know, can we, can we just do it more often? Can we increase the frequency of it? And, and in that increasing of frequency, we, we, we gain ground. But we're also challenged. And, and this is what I was getting to about myself. I find myself lately being very, very challenged in part because um, I run my wife's gardening business. And this is, this is a very tense part of the year. And I'm still feeling the tension. I mean, I, it's not like it was, say, a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. The, the, the tools that I acquired through boot camp have helped me to navigate much better. And yet even just this morning for like 15 minutes, I, I was raging about a customer who was giving us a really, really, really hard time. And I mean, I was swearing. I was just doing all this other stuff. And, but I got it out and it was done, which is probably the big difference. You know, say two years ago, I would have been carrying it on for the next week or two. Instead, I got it done in 15 minutes. Um, but, you know, that that's just part of the process. We just continue to experience it, it you know, experience this, this world of polarity the way we did before. But now we do it with a with a greater sense of I have I have more control over this. I, I can actually take control and I can influence and even change my experience of it. So that that's kind of my summary of what boot camp is like. Um, but from your perspective, Stream. You, you presented the tools to us. You've seen the way we implement it. What do you see in terms of how we individually, and there's a whole bunch of us who have done this, individually come out of this, this experience and start applying it in our lives? What patterns do you notice? The, 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 your human journey is, is a vibrational journey. And you are all on independent paths. But when you go through the, 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 the program such as Taya Boot Camp, when you go through... Uh, anything that is is driving you toward detuning transgressors, allowing more trust in your lives, you, you are going to allow your source being to be realized more often, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the more you practice something that realigns you with your source being, the more you're going to find yourselves outside of that human created matrix that we were speaking of just moments ago. And the more you find yourselves out there, the more you may find yourselves feeling like you're somewhat out in the, in the wilderness. And your response to that wilderness is, is, is sort of like you, you can take several different paths from there. And it's all going to be something that's going to expand your being, so there's no wrong way of doing it. But more times than not, there are beings that will move deeper and deeper and deeper into their practice. They will become somewhat even obsessive about it. And there's nothing wrong with that either. The, the becoming obsessive about it is, is making it your new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And those that make it their lifestyle very much enjoy the noticing when they have the spin outs, when they, how that trip down the spiral into rage actually is serving your expansion as a being because you experienced even that differently than you've experienced in the past. Yeah. You still regain control faster and perhaps you even found appreciation for your time back in the matrix yes. your time in lower <laughs> vibration. So sometimes it simply feels good to you to, to, to rage out, to, to go down there and have that, that very visceral lower vibrational experience. Mm -hmm. Because remember you, you came here to have the myriad of experiences where we are guiding you, if you so choose, is to simply be more aware of all of that, be more aware of your vibrational nature, be more aware of your triggers, and then have whatever experience you wish to have. But there are others, we, we, we have spoken of some that have, have made it a, because of the, 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 the nature of your question, some have made it this, this lifestyle experience where that becomes everything that they're about and, and, and most of their life is, is heavily influenced by it. Others have spun out of it and moved on to other things because they are seekers and, and the seeking of something new and the shininess of something new is the thing that is, that is very appealing to them. And that's how they are receiving their expansive experience. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Others have fallen back into the victim status of, I, I did all of this work. I had this experience 
and I was expecting the, the money truck to back up and, and, and the, the, the perfection to take over. And that never happened. And why did I do this in the first place? They slip back into that victim vibration as opposed to seeing the real gifts that are offered regardless of the 3D human experience. So there are all of these different paths that can be taken in something like this. Not one of them is wrong. Not one of them is something that, that we would come and say a human being should not be experiencing mm. because it's, it's an expansive journey no matter what. The, 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 the reason most humans would follow our teachings is because they are wanting to gain more control over their vibrational journey. If that means they are wanting to learn to manifest with greater intention, or they're wanting to find deeper appreciation, or if they're wanting to heal old wounds, that is the, the, the consumer of information that we are speaking to, because that is the seeker that is stumbling upon teachings such as this. The ones that have done enough work in their lives to manifest a path into this level of awareness. So in, in speaking to the, the, the various paths, we tend to focus more on those beings because we understand that is who is listening. That is who's showing up. That is who is asking. And, and so the, the asking is exactly what is always is, is extracting this information via David from us. You, you all want to understand how the universe works. You want to, want to better understand your vibrational nature. You want to better understand what, what you might call the, the energetic realm or spirituality or something of that nature. And when you, when you tune into us, you are getting a message with as little filtration from David as possible. There, there is no remnants of religion residing in this message. There, there is no 3D concept of the energetic realm, i.e. spirituality, residing in this message. The energetic realm is, is quite magical. You are quite magical. But the, the, all of the, the human-created concepts around all of that, all of those things are tools. So when we are offering you tools, we are very clear. These are tools. This is universal law, and these are tools. Universal mm -hmm. law is very simple. The human-created tools around creating an operating system that works in harmony with universal law, those are the tools. There are still human created tools. The matrix is a tool. The spiral is a tool to, to guide you to a greater understanding of your vibrational nature and how you create consciously and unconsciously. Which we love, by the way. There's no doubt we love it. It's pretty clear. Everybody who I've ever met who is alive loves to dive into this kind of stuff. They may not admit it. They may not acknowledge it. It may not be part of their regular dialogue, but you can tell. I mean, you, you get into a conversation with anybody on this planet and on some level, you can discover pretty quickly that they dive into this, even if they're not deliberately doing it consciously, they're still diving into it. So when I heard that part of your teaching the first time, that's that's what resonated with me. I kept hearing my own experience talking to other people coming through when, when you talked about that, because that's exactly what I've seen in other people. And that's why I, when you said, I said, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's what's going on. It's Something because you're all older than this matrix and the matrix is, is the thing that you, you can subscribe to, but there's going to be a point in, in everyone's experience where they come to question the matrix. Yeah. Everyone. No, it's true. Regardless of what they're saying they believe in, you, you are all possessing the intelligence to question your own reason for being, question your belief system, question the matrix, and question, is this really all that is? Because innately, you know that it's not. You all have a soul, a first being calling you forward through the matrix out of the matrix if you will it just mm. depends if you choose to listen to it or not yeah one thing that has been coming up a lot for me lately is the connectedness mm. we all have because you've you've emphasized many times we are part of source energy we are we're strands of source energy that's one word you've used to describe us um which i love by the way um and in that connectedness i think what happens over time as those of us who dive in and start doing the deep work inside ourselves, we become more and more tuned. We become more and more yeah. aware of that source connection. We become more and more aware of our higher self, as it's often called. Uh, but we also become more aware of our connections to others. That's what I've been really noticing lately. Um, I had an experience with it just uh, the other day. I had a, a guest here on the podcast, really nice lady. She had a very interesting approach. I was telling David Arb about it before the show. Um, and during the show, I, I kept having this thought about, another co-host who'd been with me for years. 
And it was actually somebody who used to do the Wednesday show with me. And you, you were on the show with her a couple of times. Um, and I kept thinking about her and thinking about it, like, why am I thinking about her? And I was saying, well, yeah, she's kind of like, the, my guess is kind of like her, you know, but that didn't quite make any sense. Anyway, we finished the show and I'm, I'm talking, I, I, as we often do with a show, there's always an after show conversation. So I'm doing the after show conversation with her and I'm telling her at one point, you know, I, I, I just had this thought about this ex-co-host and I'm telling her about the co-host and I named the co-host Cindy Chavez. She says, Cindy Chavez, I know Cindy Chavez. I said, oh, well, that's really cool. Small world. So we, we kind of marveled about that. And then I sent a, an email afterward to Cindy to tell her what had happened. And Cindy wrote back saying, that is amazing. I I've been thinking all day about texting my friend Morgana. So here were the three of us. We were totally in vibrational harmony with each other without even realizing it. And, and they just really drove home for me just how powerful these connections really are that we have to each other. Your, your entire experience as a physical being is a series of synchronicities. And if you allow, it will be a series of synchronicities that you are so aware of that they will feel very serendipitous. The, the, these are your favorite things. You, you, you are operating in a matrix that tells you that these things don't have as much value as vacationing on a yacht or flying around in your <laughs> private jet. And, and, and those things can be enjoyed by you as well. But the, the little magical things that you can all experience every day are right there waiting for you to step into the manifestation of them. Mm. And you, you absolutely are completely connected. The, 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 there is a collective consciousness at every level that reverberates into infinity. So you have a collective consciousness of humanity. You have a collective consciousness of the earth environment. You have a collective consciousness of your solar system. There's a collective consciousness of what you know as the universe and on and on and on and on. And it's all interconnected as well. But the, the closer groups that you are a collective of, e even your community, <clears throat> whether it is at this point virtual or physical, that collective consciousness of community holds such great power because you, you are collectively essentially sharing energy. And in your sharing of energy, think of what happens. J just like your, your physical creation where, where at least two beings come together. And of course, you understand that it's more than two beings. It's two beings and their entire lineage coming together to create yeah. a new, more sophisticated being. Well, collective mm -hmm. consciousness, physical is just an expression of consciousness. So your collective consciousness operates exactly the same way. There is power in numbers. There is, there is magic in, in the collective consciousness putting your minds together and, and collectively becoming more sophisticated, more elevated versions of yourselves in your collective communication. And the, the verbal communication very often in your current world acts as the conduit that brings you together. But then you start speaking and suddenly you start vibing and then the vibing takes over and, and jumps well ahead of what is being spoken into these synchronicities, into these, I know this person and you know that person and we have all of these things in common, start to show up for yourselves. Yeah. And, and they're, they're almost like they're, I don't know, milestones along the journey or something. They're, they're, they're like little flags that wave and say, hey, pay attention. Here's a clue about the thing you've been wondering about all this time. Yeah, you really are connected. Yeah, you're, you're all part of, it's basically one great big family and you're, you're part of that family. It, it, it's... It's kind of like a, it, it's a friendly hello is what it is. It, 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 it's like, you know, a message from home when you're away from home. It's that kind of a feel to it. Like, yeah, you're welcome. You, you, I'm glad you noticed the fact that you're part of this. That's a really cool thing. Now, there's another you, you flip all, side to you it. You all seek oh. community. One way or another, you seek community. Even in your not seeking community, you, you are finding resonance with others that agree that you're not seeking community and suddenly you're in community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. It's very true. Yeah. Now, now there's also a flip side to it. And I want, I want you to actually address the flip side. Because <coughs> the flip side is that there is a lot of, uh, I'll call it baggage for lack of a better term, that kind of gets carried along generationally. It gets carried along societally. Um, and, and we all are kind of tapped into it. Now, we're, we're tapped into it through our physical experience. But I have this stronger and stronger feeling that we're also tapped into it vibrationally to each other. We're, we're like, we're like feeling it and experiencing it vibrationally. I wonder if you could talk about that for a bit. 
you you have examples of that all around you and, and since you're operating in what we very often by and large what we refer to as the matrix and, and, and by the matrix we are specifically honing in on that 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 vibration of limitation that you are taught in your world and that vibration that is has fear and judgment at, at its core notice the examples that you have in your world of collective consciousness creation in the matrix many of your religions that, that, that teach rules and limitations and, and things of this nature those belief systems are so readily as, assigned to and there's such power in that collective consciousness but you can create collective consciousness outside the matrix and be quite powerful in, in that creation and you can create any anything that you can imagine you can create and there is more power in collective consciousness creation than singular creation because in singular creation you it, it is not necessarily the same thing as as horsepower because there's 20 of you you've got 20 horsepower to create something you know like in a vehicle but in your singular consciousness you are sort of out there on your own with your thought whereas when you get together in community you you are sort of keeping each other in check with your consciousness creation and you're, you're putting your you're, you're commiserating you're putting your minds together you're discussing aspects of it you're 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 sort of picking apart the 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 old matrix driven thoughts and ideas that might be attaching themselves to a new higher vibration of desired creation so you get together in your community and, and that's where the power of community comes from so it doesn't matter if it's two or 20 or two thousand or two million or two billion there is power in collective consciousness for sure and and, and so much is offered in your environment to the entire environment in collective consciousness creation I love that. There, there's, there's power oh, in the collective for sure. But one of the reasons I brought the whole uh, concept up, the whole topic up of this flip side of being connected, the, the, where, where all the, the baggage is, is that people get hung up on that baggage in a big, big way. Um, they, they get hung up on it in terms of, oh, you know, we got to create some sort of movement in order to fix this political problem, or we got this family issue that's been going on for ages. And, you know, by God, we got to fix Uncle Joe because otherwise, you know, Uncle Joe's going to screw up the genetic pool or, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm being <laughs> silly here, but you know what I mean? There's there, there's like all this stuff that goes on that has it. it and you can tell it. There, there's like this generational thing or there's a societal thing that just, just keeps coming on and on and on and on. And, and until somebody somewhere in the chain, so to speak, decides to, to try to tie a boot camp work and, and let it go, it continues. And then it frustrates people. So that, that's really the part I want. Because you, to you have a matrix about. that teaches you to, to, to give great focus to that yeah. which you do not want, exactly. which keeps it around. Which we're, we're really good at, by the way. <laughs> the, the, the matrix that's is a very that's... successful creator. Yeah, we're very, very good at that. That's um, sort of at the heart of what detuning is, yeah, isn't it? To basically just say, okay, there's this thing, and if you've detuned something, I would think the next step would be disinterest in it. You know, like if you truly detune the matrix, would you even be concerned with what the what is happening in the matrix? I, I the detuning I'm, of the matrix is found in the appreciation of the matrix, yeah, to the demonization mm -hmm. of the matrix. That's why we 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 are speaking of the matrix often. But we are also coming back around to appreciate the matrix do not demonize the matrix the matrix serves a purpose the matrix had a function it, it essentially got humanity to where you are now but you're moving into this era where you no longer need it in its its original form and the no longer needing it is extracting this information the way david is sharing it for all of you that this this has always been about that always and the the appreciation of the matrix the appreciation of those that are playing in the matrix those that are playing deep in the matrix that is the path of moving through that not allowing those that are choosing to have that more matrix laden experience to have anything to do with your experience appreciating that they are in it and they're having their reality and they're expanding their consciousness in the process you are simply choosing to expand your consciousness in a different way and i know from my own experience that I find, well, first of all, my, my tile experience has taught me how to be more of a master of that. But I also know it's, I still live in that world of polarity, right? It's still, I still live in this physical world. And so I still have 
I, I'm I'm still uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I respond to that stuff. I I I, I kind of I don't want to say resonate because I usually try to associate that with stuff that I like, but I I, I reverberate to it. You know, I, I I feel it, I experience it, and and for a time I actually take it into myself. I, I've noticed that a lot lately. Despite having all these tools, I still just dive right into this stuff, and I'm shocked by it. I'm really surprised. I mean, I know you, you've taught us. We came here to experience this. But sometimes I say to myself, what on earth am I doing? What, what's going on here? <laughs> I, mean, I have the tools to help remind me. And well, we would not do that. Is I you, still get blown away by your, it. Your vibrational journey is going to take you there sometimes. Yeah. And when you catch yourselves there, and, and you will notice that the, the longer you are, the more you practice this, the, the more you're going to catch yourself sooner and sooner and sooner. Mm. And anytime you are in any sort of below neutral situation where you are feeling anything less than appreciation, that's always going to be rooted in your judgment of, of where you are, that this should not be vibration. Mm. And that this should not be vibration is what creates all of your suffering. Yeah. And if you are suffering in the moment and, and, and beating yourselves up for being there, the fastest path out of that is to appreciate the fact that you're a physically manifested being. You're finding yourself in a different vibrational frequency. That's what makes you more sophisticated. That's what drives you toward the creation of all of your obstacles, which expand you significantly. We are not guiding you out of your obstacles or away from them. We're guiding you to experience them differently. Right. Yeah. Meet them in appreciation sooner and sooner and sooner and notice how quickly they get solved. Yeah. I have a question sure. about this. It's sort of along this line because you talk a lot about the wouldn't it be nice vibration or the uh, appreciating and, and not hammering or not trying. But if you listen to interviews of like some really, really successful people in our physical world, they talk more. It sounds a bit more aggressive than that. Like, for example, John Cleese, who's this famous comedian, talked about like he would – uh, when he was writing a, a sketch, he would be—he wouldn't be afraid to grapple with it all night if he had to. Or like mm -hmm. people saying, "I'm not afraid to die in a treadmill to get in shape." This is like not mm. would it be nicing, but it's still getting them success. So how does that work? Because they're operating in their belief system. Their belief system is their operating system. They believe that if they mm -hmm. they push themselves, they kill themselves, they they go to these great links to to manifest something, then they're going to have what they believe. They're creating within their belief system. Our message is you can choose to do that, but you don't have to choose to do that because there are just as many stories of people that stumble and say that they had no idea how they became so successful. It just happened overnight and it was something that they weren't even trying for. There, there are plenty of those stories as well. It's all about alignment. So if you get yourself into uh, to alignment because you believe that that obsessing over something and, and working several hours a day and not sleeping and, and, and do, doing the grind essentially is going to deliver results. You're getting the results because you believe that that was going to deliver for you. And it did. You, you conjured it the same way as someone that believes that they have to put no effort forth whatsoever and manifest. It all, it all works the same in your world. It's belief system. We guide you to the, wouldn't it be nice because very often all of the hammering prolongs creation and it creates such suffering for you. And very often it turns into that vibration of need. And there are times, many times, that the being never manifests the things that they really, really want because they don't relax into that wouldn't it be nice. There's also something going on in your world that once people manifest, they manifest something, especially something that is highly sought after, they believe they have to hoard that thing that they've manifested. And so therefore they want to speak to how difficult it was for them to do it, which is essentially soothing their own ego or, 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 or it is very 3D based when they're doing something like that. But it's that belief system that I need now that I have this thing, I need everyone to understand that I worked so tirelessly around it. But really that work was performed mostly in joy and appreciation because their belief system was around the grind, around doing all of it. So they were not suffering in the work. In fact, if you're really suffering in the work, most of you are not going to stay in that suffering space. You'll self-destruct there. You won't stay there. You will ultimately find appreciation for the grind, i.e. there's your belief system creating your manifestation because you're doing what you believe is going to produce results for you. This is really good. So this is great. So is there a difference then between like tenacity and holding to a goal and hammering? What's the difference between those two? 
Those two can cross over. Okay. Uh, David is a prime example of someone who's very tenacious and very type A and very much will stay with it and stay with it and stay with it until it's done and creates a lot of contrast for himself in, in the process of, of operating that way. But when you relax into the enjoyment of the process, okay. understanding that the tenacity is something that you can appreciate in yourselves, something that is in your belief system that staying with it means that you are going to stay with it through vibrational flow. Think of, think of how many stories there are of businesses and relationships and, and, and health regimes and all of these things where there are all these ups and downs, but the one who was tenacious through vibrational flow is the one that ultimately created. Because vibrational flow exists to, for lack of better terminology, to sort of weed out the ones who are not tenacious, to weed out the ones who are not going to be really prepared for that manifestation, especially if it's something that you consider big in your, in your experience, that to, to create a more perfect version of. How many business books have you read about someone, a company that almost went out of business several times until they finally prevailed? Mm. There, there is magic and tenacity because vibrational flow is going to create obstacles along the path of any creation. Think of relationships. You, you, you have two people that get together in, in high appreciation of one another, whether it is based on, on common interests or physicality or sexual experiences or whatever, and they're in that state of high appreciation in the beginning. And then as soon as that state of high appreciation is challenged, they're separating, they're splitting. But others do not. Others decide that there's enough good there to stick it out, and they stick it out, and they move through vibrational flow. They move through the obstacles and actually use those to create a stronger bond. In the creation of the stronger bond, they have a longer-term relationship. Every relationship has the ability to be that or something that ends very, very prematurely in the eyes of humanity's created thought. Okay. Okay. Really good. Well, I wanted to make sure that Alex isn't left out in the cold. She's been quiet as usual. But there, is there anything going on that you want to ask about? Or, or I'll, I can jump in with lots of questions, but go ahead. A couple of questions. So one, my first question is, as far as health goes, why do you think we manifest poor health? Like, is it a dipping in the contrast type thing? Like, what? Why? Why are we manifesting the, cancer? What's going the on? The way you feel, there, there are, are are infinite reasons around all of this, of course. But the way that you feel in your physical vehicle, you have been taught to have so much judgment around that. You've been taught to judge the way it looks. You've been taught to judge the way it feels. You've been taught to judge multiple aspects of it. They're even beyond your consciousness creation of it. And in all of that judgment and all of that fear around your physical vehicle, there is, there is that aspect of the filtration system that is your vehicle is getting clogged up or stopped up in the resistance of the things that you desire not manifesting around you. Stress, there's a desire that you wish to manifest. You are not receiving it. You are judging the fact that you're not receiving it. You are lowering your vibration in that judgment. And that energy is, is getting clogged up in your physical vehicle. And that clogging up of energy in your physical vehicle, not moving in and out, not moving through, is getting stuck there and creates illness. Creates a little bit of discomfort. And that discomfort will gain momentum. And that uh, discomfort gain momentum can turn into some sort of disease. Mm -hmm. that, that is where the term comes from. You're not at ease. You're the opposite of being at ease. So the more you're at ease with your physical vehicle being the way that it is, as opposed to being the way the matrix tells you it's supposed to be, the more you will start to see these things free up. And just because you have a diagnosis doesn't mean that you have to walk down the, path, the prescribed path of that diagnosis. And we don't mean the prescribed cure, but the prescribed path of this is what, how you're going to suffer, this is what's going to happen, and this is what's going to be the end result of that. There, there are infinite stories of, of, of beings who have, have bucked that system and have had a completely different experience than what the Matrix is telling them they're supposed to have. And you all love these stories, but then you get caught up in the diagnosis or you get caught up in the, in the, the ailment and the fear sets in and you get drawn right back into the Matrix on that topic very often instead of allowing yourselves to simply move through the experience, whatever it is, whatever it looks like, moving through the experience and appreciation. And, and learning to question, is this my true desire or is this my programming from the matrix? Again, not to demonize the matrix, but to simply be aware. 
of where that desire comes from, where that notion comes from, that you're supposed to be this and not that. Because whatever you are is exactly what you're manifesting is our promise to you. Your soul is standing up and applauding whatever you are manifesting, however you look. Whether it's plastered all over Instagram as being the, the, the best of the best or not, your soul is saying, yes, you're doing great. Yes, you are manifesting an illness. Yes, you are manifesting being overweight. You're manifesting being bald. You're manifesting being too old. You're manifesting all of these scenarios that there is absolutely nothing wrong with having. And many of you are coming around to that realization that you have this matrix that's telling you you're supposed to be something and you're not experiencing it and you're creating suffering for yourselves and then not experiencing it. But when you move through the experience and appreciation and detune the matrix, i.e. detuning, caring about what the matrix has to say about it, then you find the joy and the expansion in the experience, even if it's an illness. Pretty I cool. like that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Pretty cool. The, the, the judgment, the, the, the vibration that the matrix teaches you of this should not be, mm -hmm. that is the root of all of your suffering. And if you look at it, that is also the root of all of the things that happen in your world that you may label as evil. The, the ones that go in and shoot up schools, always at the root of that, have something they're stuck in that they are labeling this should not be. And, and they get so enraged by it and, and they hold themselves so far down their spire on the lower vibrational territory, they believe that going and committing mass murder is the only ticket out of it for them. Mm. That's their belief Very system. Important. Very important point. Especially, uh, I, and I love your question, Alex, because obviously anyone who knows your story knows that's very front and center for you lately. Right. Yeah. So when, when you hear that answer, I mean, I can see you nodding up ahead like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that makes yeah, sense I'm, to me. Yeah, I'm at that part where I'm like, I'm over it, guys. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Have you been able to find any appreciation? I mean, that's a tough question to answer, but that's basically one of the things they're, they're pointing to. Have you been able to find any appreciation in what you went through? Yeah, it, it flipped my whole agoraphobia thing around. Really? I, I just decided I didn't want to die and not in my house. So I go outside now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Cool. So there's a perfect example of how um, you, you go through a trial. You go through, you go down the spiral. You are down the spiral for quite some time because you're yeah. dealing with, with some really, really rough stuff. And you come out the other end and you find not just appreciation, but specific things to be appreciative yeah. about. Yeah. You overcame another issue that you didn't even know you were going to overcome. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I like Two that. Two birds, one stone, no killing. It was great. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, we're, we're running a little bit out of time here, so I'm going to say thank you to the stream for sharing more of your wonderful wisdom with us and, and sharing more about the tools. And we're going to invite <laughs> David, David S. back to join us as soon as he's able to rejoin <laughs> the conscious again. <laughs> Consciousness is a little tough thing when you go through that, that, that experience the way he does it. But uh, yeah, he's I don't back. know. There he goes. Okay, he's going for the for the liquid yeah. stuff. So yeah, now, now, you, now you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the stream doesn't require liquid, so he's just got cotton mouth the whole time. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, I they, they don't um, they don't worry about my physical vehicle very much. <laughs> That's kind of I didn't business. think so. <laughs> That's your job. Right? And, um, but sometimes I, I have uh, I, I've taken a drink while channeling before. Have you really? Uh, that just I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not much. Not much, but it, it does happen. <laughs> well, I'm sure your body. I used to do this thing on, with Debbie G uh, on Debbie G's, not with her on Spirituality Go Bob, with somebody else. And we would have a cocktail and channel with cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that it. must have been fun. How did that with, go? <laughs> I, with one, I would do okay. I think if I had more than one, I probably wouldn't um, have such access to them as, as I normally do. Yeah, that would, that would be hard, I would think, when you're under an influence like that. That'd be really because yeah. that's a hard enough job anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, I yeah, don't know. Tuning me. into, well, tuning into the stream is easy for me now because I do it so often. Okay. Uh, but if I were ever really down my spiral, it would be very hard to bring them mm. in mm -hmm. a situation. But I don't just don't go down that far anymore. Right. right, <coughs> right, right. But still very do interesting. Do you get more like fatigued after you like to channeling for all? Do you have like a limit on how many hours you can channel, or is that sort of just 
Uh, you know, it's, 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 it depends on the energy that's present uh, in the okay. session, but there are times that I channel and I'm just so completely wiped out afterward. Uh, mm -hmm. and there are other times that I channel and I'm, I'm really pumped up afterward. I'm kind of giddy and, um, you know, chatty and, and stuff like that. It's really, it, it depends. In, the, in person, I do it uh, virtual much more often than in person. When we did the LA event back in January, I was completely wiped out afterward completely wiped out. I needed two days to recover from that. Mm. Wow. And it was a great event. It was fun. And of course I planned all this stuff. I planned a dinner the night of, and we were had a mastery event the next day. Oh, of course. Again, that's my type A, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We're going to get all this stuff done. <laughs> and we did, but I was, it was exhausting. It was very yeah. exhausting. I, I won't do it that way again in the future. <laughs> but it was another great experience to appreciate is what we're saying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, every, everything for now. And I think th those of you that have been through boot camp that the recognizing the gift in anything that's going on, it, even if it's something that we're not supposed to be experiencing, according to the matrix, mm. what's the gift in this? And I was, uh, I think David was on with me last week, uh, a week ago today, my, my partner's father crossed over right here in the house. Uh, it's the first time I've ever witnessed that. And it was just mm. the most magical experience to, to just be in the presence of someone in their final moments and just watching them go was just wow. so cool. And, and, and you notice that, that again, polarity, you'll talk to somebody about that and, and other people will say, yes, I had that experience as well. It was so magical. And then other people will look at you like you're insane, you know, Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. It's awful. They shouldn't have, you know, but I just look at it as this is a natural progression of life. We're all going to do it and how beautiful and special to be there at the end of somebody's experience like that. And I've heard that report a lot, including here on the podcast. We've had guests on who specialize in palliative care and helping people, you know, near the end of life and so forth. And universally, they tell that story over and over again. It's it's the most wonderful privilege they've ever experienced in their lives being there when somebody transitions like that. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, that, that, that seems to be a very common experience among people who are part of an experience like that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They have death. Yeah. And it's the thing that that's right. Yeah. Yes. We've had a few of them on the show here, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. We've had a couple of doulas on the show. Yeah. That would be a great, a great thing for anyone to have around. I think with somebody that, that does that. And they're so, they're so excited about doing it mm. because one of the things that I experienced, not to knock religion, but a, um, a chaplain came by and the chaplain was, Oh, I'm so sorry. This is happening. This is the worst thing ever. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're experiencing this. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> <Let's go to laughs> <Next. laughs> I don't, I don't think that it's horrible that, you know, something that we're all going to do is being experienced here. You know, I, I don't, especially if you believe in an afterlife, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah How exciting. Yeah. You're transitioning, you're transitioning. Yeah. This is great. But yeah, not everybody sees it that way. I, I, yeah. I reminded of when my father passed um, that we had a, a memorial service afterward. And this is in a Protestant church. We go to the church. None of us except my mom is a churchgoer at that point in time. And we're all kind of sitting in this little vestibule where we're meeting with the minister. And I realized we were there for him to comfort us, which we did not. None of us needed it. And the look on his face of absolute confusion was priceless because he wasn't used to that. He was used to doing the consoling and there was no one needing consoling and, and he felt lost. You could tell. It's like, I don't know what to do in this room. This is my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. This stuff. Wow. Anyway, this has been great That's guys. Cool. Thank you so much for, for joining us. David R. I mean, this is really good getting yeah. to know you too. And, and, you know, best yeah. of luck. Thanks for having you. your journey with you, especially yeah. now that you come out of boot camp. You're, you're, you're kind of at the fun part actually. It's, it, oh, yeah. it's where you, you, you well, you've kind of re-entered, you know, the polarity in a big way. So you're still dealing yeah. with all that stuff. But now you're just yeah. you're going through the part now where you're discovering just how much the stuff sticks. And you're, right. you're going to find it sticks a lot. I mean, you'll okay. you'll dive into that. You'll dive down that spiral. You'll do all that kind of stuff. But then That's you'll great. notice later on. Wow. My tools really came to the fore when I needed them, which right. I think is pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Enjoy the cool. I've had a few experiences even recently where like I kind of think of like the way I would have reacted to it before boot camp yeah. was like would have been totally different. And now I'm kind of looking at a thing. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, the reaction is totally different now and just not phased by stuff, you know, right. at all. Right. <laughs> you know, Very so, cool. Yeah. So, David S., thank you very much for uh, doing the, the channeling thing today. 
as usual. Always good to be here. Thank you all. You're wonderful. Love that so much. And Alex, glad to see you doing so well. Keep it up, girl. We love it. Thank you. Thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. 